Hello and welcome back to Last Van Standing. This is the React Show. We look back at Manchester United's glorious win against Newcastle in the League Cup. I'm with Adam McCola to find out if this is a catalyst for a greater future for Manchester United. If you're new to Last Van Standing, hit like and subscribe. Let's get on with it. So, Adam McCola, Manchester United have won their first trophy since 2017. How does it feel? I Actually, Ad, how, what does winning a trophy actually feel like? Because it's good. It looks good. It looks like something I'd like to do one day. Um, it feels good, man. It feels good. It's been a, it, it's been a long time for United as well. I know it's been an even longer time for you. Um, but yeah, it's yep. been a while. Uh, but it feels good. It feels good. I'm so, I'm unfort. I feel sorry for you because not only are you one of my arch enemies in this, you don't feel sorry in this me. YouTube Absolutely. space that we have. You're also <laughs> a friend, and I want you to feel this feeling. But um, oh, God bless you. I won't you've been, break. you've been, you've been let down by your team um, and players like Harry Kane bottling it all the time. And I, I don't. I think winning is a bit passe. It's a bit obvious. But <laughs> it's the obvious thing that you want, and um, so I'm happy in the current state. But you know what? When I was watching it yesterday. It didn't. It wasn't just a, a League Cup win. In my that, opinion. by the way, what Flav just did is the equivalent of you know when a team's getting battered and they start cheering throw-ins. That's what you just did, <laughs> or, pret or pretending to score a goal. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's when you know things are really bad. And you have to <laughs> make your own fun up in the, on the terraces. That's when yeah. things are really bad. Um, yeah, the, what was what was I, I, you know f from afar? Obviously, I didn't have a dog in a fight. I, d I didn't really have. I care who would won. I guess if I had to choose one, I would have wanted Man United to win over Newcastle because of their funding and whatnot. But I didn't really care. But what, what my observation from it was that it was more than a League Cup. It felt more than a League Cup. It, it felt like it was, it was this was, this could be the catalyst for something else. And the reason why I said that is for Varane, who's won everything. He's won everything under the sun, pretty much. I'm pretty sure there's not. Yeah, he's he's won. He's, he's literally won everything. I think. Um, and. He's celebrating wildly. Ten Hag's hugging Alex Ferguson. It just felt like it was sort of symbolised without being too over the top or dramatic, like a rebirth. Does that make any sense? It does make sense. Um, obviously, let's. I think, I mean, and, and Eric and I have been keen to make this clear. Like, let's not get carried away. It's one trophy, and he does seem to have that Manchester United thing where, all right, let's look at the next one. And you see Marcus Rashford tweeting today saying, right, on to the next one, and all these kind of different things. And that's where our mindset has to be because ultimately if in a year and a half, two years time and the only thing Eric Ten Hag's won is the, the League Cup, we'll probably look at that as, as a failure because the, the trajectory we're on at the moment is on an upward one. So we need mm. to keep that going. We can't just you know be happy with the League Cup um, because all due respect to it, you know, our eyes are on bigger prizes. We need to bring the league back. It's been 10 years since that and all these kind of different things. So, But it did feel significant. You get that you know, thing where we haven't won a league, uh, sorry, a, a trophy for, for, for six years. You, that's off your mm. back immediately. Eric Ten Hag's got, you know, the silverware question off his back immediately. Um, and we saw how much time that bought, you know, Arteta at Arsenal now. I don't yeah. think, you know, Eric Ten Hag be able to finish eighth, eighth and fifth. But what I'm saying is, it'll make him feel at home. It'll make him feel like he belongs. It'll give him that extra confidence, that extra swagger to be a Man United um, manager and also you, you know, if any players were ever gonna doubt the guy, like it's like, look, if you follow me, I can bring you trophies and hopefully we go on and and, and cement it and and build on a more success. But that's how it feels because he's uh, building how... sustainable success, he's building the foundations of success. Well, this and... is this is what I was gonna ask because but the but the the, the five years prior to this uh, to the last time you won, you were trophyless as well. Like um, Jose Mourinho won the League Cup after five years of no transfer uh, trophies at, at United. And it felt like that, that might have been a catalyst. And like, what, what's different this time? That What's Ten Hag potentially going to do differently than, than Jose, do you think? That's true. I remember looking at Mourinho and Pogba on a pitch at Stockholm. I'm thinking, these lot could possibly go on to do something, maybe win a league or something together. And we saw mm. how that ended. Football changes very quickly. Um, and you're only as good as your last result, really. So... The players have to take that into consideration. But I think the difference is when you look at what Ten Hag says and you look at what he does, there's no hypocrisy in anything that he's doing. Look, all due respect to Jose Mourinho, that year was fantastic winning those two trophies. But he also sacrificed the league. Um, we haven't sacrificed that. 
at this point in the campaign. Uh, we're going well in the Champions League, developing younger players. Um, you look at the squad, and not only have his signings done really well, but the players that were already there, you know, people were writing off Rashford, Shaw, uh, Wambasaka, um, all these different players, and he, he's getting a trick out. I don't know, Marcus Rashford's having his greatest ever season. So, yeah, it's it feels sustainable. It feels different. It feels like mm. this could be something for a while. And he feels like a Man United manager. He's, You know when Mourinho was saying stuff like football heritage after we lost against Sevilla and that? And yeah. it was, it's not us, it's, it's you kind of thing. And when he come out and said, you know, I, I, we, I think we lost 3-0 against Spurs, I think. And he come out and yeah. said, oh, three Premier Leagues for me and zero for them and all this kind of stuff. And it was like, you're making it about you. And Eric Ten Hag is, is, is learning about the history. Look, this isn't to say Mourinho didn't know the history of the club, but he's learning the history. He's taking time out to, you know, he, he keeps saying this thing where he keeps saying uh it's it's honour and glory. It's honour and glory. He keeps saying it's all about glory and honour. And um, there's a banner at United that pretty much says those words. Um, it's glory and honour. Well, is is this something he can see in the stadium? He can yeah, see and it's like, it's like, he, it's such an easy win. It's such an easy thing for him to say. Yeah. But he says it, you know, he, he, he speaks about the, the, the record of, you know, I think when Rashford scored around the Munich air disaster uh, anniversary, he mentioned that and he, you know, he's, He's clearly learning about the club's history. He said he loves the club. He wants to build on the, the legacy that we have and bring his up. I just love the man, you know. Yeah, I, I get it's it. Everything about him, not just what he's doing on the football pitch, not just what he's building on the training pitch, but just the manner in which he carries himself, what he says, the way he makes his decisions. The boy's a Man United manager. The man is a Man United manager. It's clear. The the C the cynic in me might say, oh, he's doing this to curry favour with the fans. He's saying the right things. But it doesn't really matter because he's making the effort to learn about the culture within the football club. And as a fan, that's all you want to hear. Yeah, you can't just was... do those things. You can't no, you just win as well. know your history. You know what I mean? Ali knew his history. But not yeah. only that, he's doing all the other things as well. And it's just a special combination. Uh, we've got a real one. We've got a real yeah. one. He's like messed up, you know? I you know. I just, so, so I just, I did read about this uh, earlier today that uh, Daniel Levy said mm, not sure about him we interviewed him apparently could have got him and he said no and um, we must have gone for Nuno instead <laughs> Nuno well I don't know Thank you. brilliant further great work from uh, Daniel Levy anyway not about him um, the signings that he's made were brilliant um, especially I mean Anthony time will tell he does look like he's starting to grow into the United he's a player shirt, Anthony is you know I I know he's but, got those things that annoy us all, but he's, he's important to the team's shape. He's got six or seven mm. goals this season. and some He's got the winner against Barcelona. He's scored against City, Arsenal. The price tag isn't his fault either, is it? But he didn't, pick, yeah, he's, he didn't pick the price. And to be fair, he costs the same as Maguire. You know what I mean? Um, it's not, but it's, I do want to highlight Casemiro's role and uh, Martinez as well, but especially Casemiro, because you mentioned Rashford coming into the side. And um, you know, and, and becoming the player he is this season after a, a difficult one last last year, but Casemiro's inclusion just gives him that freedom, isn't it? You're not having to play a double pivot in midfield; he can kind of deal with that. He can do the work of Fred and McTominay on his own, so that your so Rashford has more of a freedom to go forward. Is that a fair thing yeah, to say? Yeah, I said to my dad and brother on the way to Wembley, um, Casemiro, don't let us lose this game. There's not a chance in that and you can kind of look at Newcastle and it's probably where they were missing a few of those exp experienced winners um, you know uh, we, we didn't mention Rafael Varane because Ten Hag didn't sign him but Ten Hag's been getting mm. the best out of him since he mm. you know since, this is the best we've seen Rafael Varane at United as well um, those are leaders those are winners they've won You're everything you can win do you know what I mean and they come to Manchester United and they're treating the Carabao Cup like it's the World Cup they've yeah. They've, they've really bought into it. Casemiro's come, I think, with a point to prove. Um, we lost against Brentford 4-0 earlier in the season. And I think he texted his agent saying, don't worry, tell him I'm, I'm coming to fix it. <laughs> and and he's done exactly that. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. these are these are guys that really wanted to play for the club. Like, And that's different. That makes such a massive difference. And then when you're signing these players that don't really want to be there or, or they're on their way to City and then... 
you, you gazump them at the end. It's like, we get players that want to sign for the club. And I think he's building that now as well. He's going to make Man United a place where players, I think we're going to get, touch wood, we get new owners that, you know, are attractive to players anyway. But the manager's going to attract a lot of players. They're going to want to come and be a part of this. Mm. Eras are there. Uh, what did he say? Eras come to an end. Yeah, yeah, every dog has his day. He never said that. I don't know what he said. That was Al Pacino, wasn't, that, wasn't it? Probably wasn't that interesting. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I've got something interesting to ask you before we finish here, mate. Is Harry Kane will never win a trophy if that's what you're <laughs> No, he won't. And it's a shame <laughs> for him. But do you know what? I don't care. If, if he has to stay and not win anything... Tough. Liverpool currently sit uh, as as the most successful That's club in said. England <laughs> with forty five trophies. Manchester United have forty three. Although if you look at the t- type of trophies, Man United are, are much more prestigious because Lee, Liverpool are including nine any, uh, nine League Cups. Anyway, you could you're still in the Premier League. You're still in the Premier League race, although it's difficult. You're in the FA Cup, which you could win, and you're in the Europa League, which you could win. You're probably joint favourite of Arsenal I'd imagine it was quite, quite close by the end of the season you could be joint top as the most successful team in in, 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 in in English history do you dare to dream Adam that you can pick up another couple of pots this year I think we were threatening the, the West Ham games were in me in the cup they have potential to come and shock us there they're not playing their, I know they've returned to form this weekend but they're not playing their best football and you know we've just won the final we need to be on that one but if you win that, you know, you're in a good you what you one step away from a semi final at Wembley again. So mm. I think we're a threat in the FA Cup, um, although we got a difficult game. The Europa League, you mentioned Arsenal, I think they're they're obviously one of the favourites and Betis aren't gonna be easy, but we just knock the favourites out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. the thing with the Europa League though is it affects your league campaign a lot. That's what you know what I mean, don't you? Yeah, you know, when you're course. in the Europa League, you kind of have that Cutely thing where Sundays and Monday night football, it just kills you eventually, mm-hmm. I think. That's the only thing that would worry me. But like I said last time, last time we won the Europa League, we sacrificed a league campaign for it. At the moment, we're creating a little cushion between ourselves and the rest. Um, so if that goes on, then we can go take that seriously as well. Maybe we can win a cup treble. Who knows? But can't count your chickens and... Anything can happen in these games. That's it for the Reacts. Congratulations to Man United. Congratulations to Adam. The main show is coming out on Wednesday, so keep an eye out for that. And if you enjoy everything we're doing here on Last Fan Standing with Bet Victor, please hit like and subscribe. Get involved in the comments below. It really helps and supports the show. More from us next week. Thanks.